Why do we think the cure for cancer is in space? Are we onto something there? There's a billion bullets flying around in orbit right now. That's when you're in your Star Wars future, man. That's when you got multiple space stations and people on the moon and Mars because you're mining helium-3 or printing organs. Everybody's got a spare kidney in their fridge, you know. People talk about 3D printing organs? Yeah. What? Now let's actually build the, the damn thing. And uh, he's like, what are we gonna need? We're gonna need to go farther into space than we've gone in a while because it's harder. Farther you go out there, the harder it is to come home and the more hazards there are. There's debris that are, I mean, there's, there's a billion bullets flying around in orbit right now. And even a one millimeter piece of aluminum at orbital velocities will shred a spaceship. No and kidding. We, yeah, 100%. <clears throat> we put the space station at 400 kilometers approximately for a reason, because atmosphere, the debris that's out there will burn up in the atmosphere very quickly. As a result, though, we have to keep boosting the, the, the space station. But you go farther out there, especially in the 1,000-kilometer regimes, you've got micrometeoroids and orbital debris, paint uh, chips that fall off old uh, satellites, or worse, satellites that were blown up uh, in ASAT tests will create this, like, just debris field. And, it, and, it, and, and it's flying around at 8 kilometers a second. Um, so you have debris, you have more radiation, which avionics don't like. Human bodies don't necessarily like it either. And then in order to come home, you have to put that much more energy to go farther out, which means you have to take that energy to come back. Um, so he's like, we got to go farther out there if we're going to go to the moon and Mars. We're going to need spacesuits. He's like, NASA's been using the same spacesuits for 40 years. They literally cost billions of dollars. I mean, it's hundreds of millions a year in just upkeep on those suits every year. And they leak. You know, there's a situation on the space station where, you know, you had an astronaut where their helmet was filling with water from their liquid cooling suit. I mean, like, totally scary stuff. So he's like, we're going to need to build suits for thousands of people. And no one's done it in decades. So we got to do that. And we're going to need to test new forms of communication because, you know, our various, you know, legacy infrastructure, ground stations and teacher satellites are 40 years old. And I was like, I'm totally in on this. Um, and Kid Poteet, who you interviewed, he was too. He was the mission director on Inspiration4 and obviously flew him with me on the last one. Like we were totally sold on the idea of a developmental program. And yeah, so I guess about a month or so after I came back from Inspiration4, we created Polaris program and we were back at it. Man. So what's it, I mean, how is it being in orbit? It's, it's awesome. I mean, like I said, other, once you get past the hanging upside down from your bed feeling for a little bit, it's... Um, yeah, it's amazing, man. I, you know, everything happens like quickly, but like time melts away. You, um, you're you just always busy doing things. Your schedule is planned out to the second and you want to make every bit of that time count. Like you know how lucky you are to be there. And if there is an experiment that could help with cancer treatment or, you know, the human body's ability to endure microgravity for long periods of time, like you want to play your part in learning that. And, um, and you do. And it's kind of amazing how much time you have to get stuff done because it's not like you have to go far for anything. Like people were telling me, oh yeah, you know, when you brush your teeth, it's going to take five times longer than it is here on earth. It was like, I, went to, I literally floated a foot, grabbed the toothpaste, I was done, and then I floated a foot and I picked up an experiment. Like things just, you're just sailing through things super fast, you know? Right on. I mean, what is it? What, you keep bringing up, you brought it up a couple of times at breakfast too, uh, you know, cancer treatments in space and mm -hmm. what we might find. I mean, why do we think the cure for cancer is in space? Are we onto something there? Or I don't know if we think it, I think it's more we hope, right? And it doesn't, we, we, we hope that there is something that we will find in space, in the unique environment of microgravity, or say on the lunar surface with lunar regolith, that unlocks an economy that creates a justification for us to be there. Because right now, we are there mostly for um, national prestige. We have an international space station, we have American astronauts there. Uh, I think if you ask anyone at NASA, like what is the single greatest accomplishment we've, we've gotten from the International Space Station, they won't say cancer treating pharmaceutical drugs, even though we've done lots of experiments, they'd say, we kept astronauts alive continuously. We've had a continuous heartbeat on the International Space Station for nearly a quarter of a century. It's a hell of an accomplishment, but you need, you need that orbital economy to pay for everything we want to see in space someday. Like it can't be perpetual taxpayer funding. So whether it's cancer treating drugs, like you can use microgravity to create crystal formulations of pharmaceutical compounds to increase like the density of the treatment, which might increase the effectiveness. People talk about 3D printing organs in microgravity. 
Um, but none of these things have like truly come to fruition yet. People talk about 3D printing organs. Yeah. What? I mean, microgravity. What, what, what can we do there that we can't do as easily here on Earth? Um, but there's lots of experiments, but nothing that has cracked the code yet on it. But if we don't figure it out, then it's perpetual taxpayer funding. And, and frankly, space, since the beginning of the space program, has always faced the debate of how can we invest so much money here? NASA's budget, $25 billion a year, whether it's $25 billion or $20 billion, which it may, may wind up tra you know, tracking towards, how can you justify that when people are starving here and mm -hmm. people are homeless and, and health care is bad? Like, we are always going to be faced with that debate, and it's a good debate to have. Uh, until we we kind of crack the code and figure out how to extract more value from being in space than we put into it. And when you figure that out, whatever it may be, that's when you're in your Star Wars future, man. That's when you got multiple space stations and people on the moon and Mars because you're mining helium-3 or printing organs. Everybody's got a spare kidney in their fridge. You know, it's like we, we got to figure that out at some point uh, or else we're just going to be on the taxpayer um, you know, pipe for a long time. Can, can you just help me understand? I don't know nothing about this microgravity. I mean, why are we why are we experimenting with cancer drugs and three D printing of organs in space? What what is it about space that that is motivating people to to do this type of research up there? Yeah, I mean, you know, kind of the lack of gravity, which is not even the the really right way to say it, because you got a lot of gravity. Gravity is keeping you pretty much where you are, right? Uh, when you're when you're in orbit. Um, just allows you to do things without the influence of something, you know, being held on the table like that. Now, this is what the big, bright, you know, the big brilliant minds are working on. Uh, I can tell you 100% they have done crystal formulations of cancer treating drugs in space, which kind of, you know, increases the density of the treatment um, in a way that hopefully increases the effectiveness of it. I don't know if it's conclusive or not yet. Uh, how far have they come with 3D printing in space? Um, not organs, um, but they do. They are doing various biotech uh, experiments in space, but nothing's nothing's come to fruition yet after a quarter of a century. And that's kind of the problem. We need yeah. to fix that and accelerate it pretty quick. Uh, you know, also at breakfast uh, talking about the uh, for all mankind on Apple TV. NASA, if you watch that show is like the most influential agency in the U.S. government. Everybody comes to them because they bring in revenue. You know, uh, it's not just all about tax revenue, and it's from mining helium-3 on the moon. Um, that doesn't mean that just because there's an Apple TV show on it that, you know, that's a, that's a credible path. We, 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 do, we do believe you can get more power out of, uh, more, you know, through a fusion reaction with helium-3, you can get more power out than you put into it. Um, but the point is, you need something like that. You need some orbital economy uh, in order to build that future. Um, and that show does a pretty good example of it. Well, I mean, it seems like, you know, this year I've talked to a lot of, a lot of innovators and, um, a lot of these guys, I mean, we talked to Astro Forge mining, yeah. uh, asteroids, talked to Teeps, Steve Quast, who, uh, has a company called Space Built with will assemble satellites and stuff like that in space. He was talking about helium three, on the moon, and he, and he said that China was mining that. We talked to um, Baji Bot, who is um, building solar solar power uh, power plants up there, and hopes to beam solar energy back to Earth from space. Talked to a lot of people about this stuff. I mean, it seems like. As far as the you know civilian type population, the the innovators, I mean, they're gung ho on this. And the, you know what else I'm seeing is I'm seeing all these uh, younger younger innovator types uh, who they're all jumping on the mission to Mars train. We're gonna need power. We're gonna need food. We're gonna need. No matter where you're watching Sean Ryan show from, if you get anything out of this, please like, comment, subscribe, and most importantly. Share this everywhere you possibly can. And if you're feeling extra generous, please leave us a review on Apple and Spotify podcasts.